Hi and welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to take a look at uh, some of the new um, updates and features that have been added recently. The Reaper developers have uh, been uh, busy as hell <laughs> over the last few months. And one of the major things that has gotten an overhaul uh, over the last week or so is the effects browser. So I'll show you some of the new features there. We need to select our track first. What you'll notice immediately is the search filter is now at the top. Some people don't like that, but I really do. That's something we're used to from uh, web searches and, uh, and similar uh, programs. And another really cool thing is now in the folders uh, section down here, where you have your favorites and uh, plugins that you always use. These are now drag and drop, so you can uh, reorder them to your liking. I haven't added much yet there, but I'm in the process of doing so. And here in the options menu, we have show in effects list. A really cool new option here. If you have uh, several different versions of the same plugin, you can choose to show only VST3 or VST2. And one thing they've done as well is hiding um, developer names in uh, plugin names. That way you don't get a uh, company name uh, twice. So it cleans up uh, quite a bit. And another cool, uh, cool little thing that we've done uh, now is once you have the effects browser open, you can now drag and drop plugins into an empty area in the arrange window. And this will automatically create a new track with that effect on it. And this works for both VST instruments as well as the regular effects. So let's just grab a plugin here. And there it is, ready to go. This is handy if you're adding a new track and you already know that you're going to need a certain plugin on it. And before you ask, you can uh, control select several plugins. And they'll each be on uh, separate tracks. Or you can right click and add to selected tracks. I'm not really sure if this is a new thing, but I've, uh, I haven't really discovered it until now. But it's really handy. If you haven't digged uh, into the various menus for the effects browser, you have a few uh, cool options here. You can show what you want to see in the left pane uh, up here. Let's see. Show in left pane list. And there you can hide um, the stuff that you never use or uh, don't need. So I'll be hiding a few more here. So you can see you can uh, clean up uh, the look of the effects browser really quickly. And you have your saved effects chains as well here. And I'll just... Uh, Take a quick look at uh, some of the other cool uh, stuff they've added recently. And you can find a few of them in the render window. A couple of months back they added uh, an option that so that you can uh, render two formats at once. This is really cool because very often when you've done a mix you want to both a WAV and uh, MP3 format. So we are down here, we have the primary output format and secondary. I'm going to set that to be mp3. And also, they've uh, really um, upped the metadata element to this. So this is really cool, uh, especially for mp3s and other formats. So you no longer have to use a third-party uh, software just to uh, get your tags right for... Uh, for whatever metadata you need. And I think the only thing they haven't added here yet is uh, ISRCs. But in most cases when you're releasing songs online for streaming, you do that uh, online via the distributor you use. So uh, some, uh, some cool stuff there. Another cool one is that they finally uh, sorted out the scrolling in the mixer. 
Scrolling with the mouse when in the orange view works as you expect, and finally does in the mixer as well. One track at a time. This is something that has bugged a lot of people over the years. So finally that one's right. And the last one I'll briefly mention is when it comes to uh, track grouping. In line with the times, when it comes to uh, grouping, it's no longer called master and slave. Something I haven't really thought about, but uh, I don't have any issue with it. So it's lead and follow. And that's something that makes sense. So in functionality, no changes there. It's just a new name. In addition to this stuff, uh, there's been a whole lot of bug fixes and um, other uh, new cool uh, stuff. It's a great piece of software that keeps getting better. That should cover a, a good bit of um, features that I use a lot. Hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.